Well, hey there, YouTube. Would you like to know how to sing long phrases and hold notes for a long, long time? That's what today's video is about. And it's actually a technique follow-up to a voice teacher reaction video I did of Hamora Set Amon's Akin Kanalan. And in that song, she holds a, a phrase for about 14, 15 seconds, which isn't a terribly long time, but in the middle of a song, in the context of singing in the middle of a song, you sort of, when you hear a phrase that long, you sort of in the middle of it somewhere expect somebody to take a breath, and when they don't, it's impressive. Now, again, it's not, as, as far as very long phrases go, it's not the longest. You know, there are, Dimash holds notes forever, Bocelli, Andre Bocelli holds notes forever. I have a Broadway guy that I, that I love, Adam Pascal, holds uh, uh, the last note in a live version of the song Pity the Child for 26 seconds the note and the run that he creates after that. So, you know, there are very, very long runs, and people have a lot of misunderstanding on how this is done. So I want to see if I can clear a little of that up for you as soon as I introduce myself. Hello, I'm Mike Goodrich, creator of the Inner Singer podcast, the Inner Singer singing programs, and all things Inner Singer. And uh, so anyway, really happy to be here. Thank you so much, by the way, for all you have, who have subscribed and giving me suggestions and ideas and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I really, really love it. And uh, just about a 25,000 subscribers getting close. I think we're going to hit it this weekend. It's awesome. I don't know when you're watching this video, but uh, um, but anyway, as of right now in July of 2020, that's what we got. So anyway, let's jump into this uh, crazy world of holding notes a long time. Now, the first mistake that people generally make when they're thinking of holding phrases for a long time, is they think it requires great breathing strength or strength in their breathing muscles. And so they're always curious to know, students who come in over the years, you know, I don't think my, my breathing is good enough, I can't hold notes very long, and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I kind of want to myth bust that. Um, Ordinarily, you know, if you're, if you're just, if you've got a nor normal breathing apparatus for, you know, just being in life and speaking, your, your breathing muscles are probably strong enough for your needs as a singer. Uh, providing your breathing coordination is proper. And I have a video on that I can link in this one as well. Um, just talks about, you know, the breathing. But I mean, we all know as singers, that it's diaphragmatic breathing. It's not up here because you don't get enough air. It's down here, which you probably can't see because of the camera, but it's diaphragmatic, you know, so you get the full amount of air into the lungs. But again, that's not even really what it's about when it comes to holding notes and phrases for a long time. It's really about a couple of things. Balance and coordination of the voice. So a registrated voice, meaning you're able to go through the register smoothly and easily, like a car with an automatic transmission. Push on the gas, it just goes. So to be able to hold notes and phrases for a long time and runs and all that kind of stuff, you need to be able to go through and have a balanced voice coordinated throughout all the registers. So that's number one. And that's called vocal alignment. Okay, all the vocal, all the registers are aligned. We also call it registrated. Uh, the other thing is the vowels. The vowels have to be in line as well. If the vowels aren't in line, if you have an E here and an A there and an A there and an A there and an U there and an U, you know, if the vowels are all over the place, it's going to be very difficult to do any kind of runs or anything that involve different vowel sounds or different words if one, and if one vowel is in and one vowel is out. And you, it's, it's too confusing for the voice and the mechanism. So we want to have those in line as well. And the other thing that's really, really important that, that a lot of people miss is chord closure. Simple as that sounds. The vocal cords, which sit right in here, I'm sure you know, and they're horizontal, they need to come together in a coordinated, balanced way. And when they do, when you have a balance of muscle, the muscles that control the vocal cords, and air, and without any compensatory muscles pushing or squeezing, then that is really a huge step towards being able to hold phrases and notes for a long time. 
if you have chords that aren't really coming together nicely, and you have this kind of a sound, ah, you have a lot of air coming through, then you've got a leaky valve. So all the breathing exercises in the world aren't going to help you. You can do this kind of a thing, right? Where, and you've probably seen this. I mean, you can do that until the cows come home. And that's, that's good. It's an elementary exercise and it's good. I teach it myself. It's good to get the coordination diaphragmatically. It's good to kind of exercise that breathing in and then having that resistance to the air. It's good for that. It's good to coordinate that. But it does absolutely nothing for the vocal cords. If then when you go to sing and you have a leaky valve, which allows you to lose air, then that didn't help. Or if you go to sing and you're, you're pressing too hard and squeezing the vocal cords, then that didn't help either. So you really need the balance of air and the muscles within the vocal cords to simulate that. This, simula this simulates that. So if you have the vocal cords functioning properly against the air pressure, right? Then if that's balanced and the voice is registrated, meaning aligned and the vowels are in line, you've got, you know, you got three green lights. All of a sudden you're, you're, you should be relatively golden in terms of holding and sustaining notes and phrases for a long time. There's no big trick. It doesn't take tremendous lung capacity. It doesn't take any of those kinds of things. I mean, for example, I'm not a runner. I'm going to just, I'm going to set my timer here just for fun. Just to show you. I'm not a runner. I don't run marathons. I'm a thin guy. You know, I don't do huge breathing exercises all the time for my singing or anything like that. And yet, you know, if I take and sing a phrase, then, I mean, you can hear and I'll, I'll kind of time it. And so, let me just push. It's going to be hard to do this and look at the same time, but give, me, give myself a note. I just go. Okay. Well, I didn't stop it in time, but it's about 23 seconds. And you know, I, I'm I'm not a big guy. I, I I'm not running around, you know, practicing all day long. I've got a fairly balanced voice, relatively good chord closure. My voice is fairly registrated. I'm not even having the best vocal day, obviously, but. The point is, it's all three of those things together. It's not massive breathing exercises. It's cord closure, the balance of air and muscle that works the vocal cords, a voice that's aligned throughout the registers, and vowels that are in line. Now, let's talk a little bit about the vowels, because this gal... Um, Morissette, really, really good vowels. You know, and, and the song that I did, I mean, she's sitting in a chair, she's sitting in a chair on a bus doing a live tour. It's actually really cool. Um, she's not standing up, she's not doing anything to physicalize anything. She's sitting there, right? Um, but her vowels are phenomenal. And her mouth shape is nice and relaxed. She's not doing anything to assist the pitch. Really, really, really important. That's another thing. All of these muscles are very, very relaxed, and they're used only for emoting and communication. In other words, if I'm doing anything in here to assist my pitch making, I'm not going to be able to hold notes very long, because that extra added tension is working against me. This all has to be relaxed and completely divorced of pitch making. And she's really, really expert at that. 
And, and, you know, a lot of, most of the great singers are. It's funny because you can't really tell because a lot of them are, are emoting and they're, they are using their mouth and what have you. But, and, you know, some of them are using too much, but a lot of them don't really have to do that. You know, there was a, there's a show called America's Got Talent. And years ago, there was a ventriloquist singer that won. And I was elated because I had been for so many years telling people that we're doing all of that stuff to say, just to be a ventriloquist, just don't, don't even hardly move your mouth. Oh, you know, you don't need any of that stuff. Okay. Balance coordination. So, Let's talk about the vowels for a second. I'm going to give you some real, real quick things, and I'm going to recommend um, my free Singing Accelerator video series, and the link will be in the description. I'm going to recommend that because in it, I have a, a video that you won't find anywhere else on what I call the magic of vowels. I have a vowel chart PDF, and you can get all this for free. It's about a 20-minute walkthrough of that vowel chart going in great detail over what I'm just going to touch on right now. And the link will be in the description. Um, but there's just not enough time to go through all that now based on what I've already said in this video. Otherwise, it's going to be a three-hour video. And, and who, who's going to want that, right? Uh, and my lights are going to die if I, if I do that. But anyway, what I do is I break down the vowels in, in little families of vowels. And this is just from my experience over many, many years. And the families are this, this kind of a family. I'll take Ah, like father, which we can think of as a little bit of a broad vowel. Ah. And then UH, ah, like mother. Now you'll notice, and I'm going to do this on purpose with my mouth. I'm going to go ah, and I'm going to go narrower. Ah, like mother. Oh, like foot. Oh, like phone. Ooh, like food. If I go the other way, ooh, oh, oh, uh, ah. Uh. Now, why am I, why did I create that little family of vowels? Because let's take those two extremes. Let's take ah, uh, ooh. And let's say I don't know how to say an ah uh, in line. Ooh brings me into line, as you know, like an ooh, uh, oh, those all bring me, ooh, they bring me in line. But if I don't know how to handle an ah, I could go, ooh, ooh, oh, ah, boy, oh boy, it just fell out. You hear how abrupt that sounds? That's not a vocal line at all. So what I need to do is I need to take a page out of those vowels that sit a little narrower. Let's take the sound uh like foot, which I love. It's a fantastic sound. It's a great teaching sound. So I'll take the sound uh like foot. Now I can go either direction from there. But if I stay in that uh position, I can go uh. I went uh uh uh. But I didn't go uh. I didn't do that. Uh, or, uh, see how close they become at that point? You can hear all the vowels, but I'm not going, uh, 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 I'm not doing that at all. I'm going, uh, 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 uh. they're all in line. So, and that's how you've got to sing. Otherwise, it's going to be all over the place. And it's especially important in, in or around the bridges. Okay, the bridges and the voice. Hugely important. And this is one reason that most people knock out their bridges and can't get through their break. Because they're taking a broad vowel up too wide, too broad, ah, like that. It's also why some people, in their men or women, like a questionable note in their bridge or in their break, they'll say, well, gee, you know, I can get that note in this song, but I can't get it in this song. It's almost always the vowel. If I say to somebody, well, what's the, what's the word in that song? They'll say, oh, it's look, or it's food, or you. What's the word in that song? 
Let's uh, father. It's obvious. You got over here, you got an ooh, ooh, which are self gatherers. If you, if you behave yourself on those, they're going to pull you right into the mix. But an ah, if you don't know how to handle it, it's going to take you too broad. So that's one little family of owls. And, th and, and by the way, so you can go when you have your sheet music or you have your music or your lyrics and you're looking at, at words that you're having a challenge with, you want to identify the vowel. And if you're having a challenge with it, take the next narrowest one. By narrow, I mean ah is a little broad, ooh is narrow. We go from ah, a little narrower, uh, tune it in a little more, a little narrower, uh, oh, ooh. See what I mean? So, if you're ever going to say my father, my, or then try my fa with an uh. My fa, if that didn't work, try my fa. Once you're in, then you can sneak your way back to the vowel. Again, I go into much more detail on this in the video I'm suggesting you get. Now, another little family of vowels would be i, e, a. It, ed, at. Same idea. If I have a, e, 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 a. Now, of course, I wouldn't do it like that. I'm just demonstrating for, for the, um, so you understand and you can kind of get the, the, the contrast of those. But if I have everything kind of in an a e place, e, and now watch me go to a. Uh, now watch me go to ear. Uh, now watch me fall out. Uh, now watch me pinch it. Uh, uh, so uh, it stays in, right? So if you have to sing, for example, in this country or the, or with the Star Spangled Banner. There's, there's the thing, uh, the last line, or the land of the free. And a lot of people like to go, or the la, uh-oh, I'm out. But what if I took the next narrowest road and I spelled it L-E-N-D, land, or the la, 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 I'm in, okay? So this is just a quick little lesson on how to do that. But once you get these vowels in line, it takes the pressure off the voice it's really easy to hold notes and phrases a long time or do riffs and runs and all that kind of stuff, okay? Now, you also have A's, which is a little bit of a diphthong, right? A, E, A, E. You have I's, a diphthong, A, E. You need to identify the part of the sound that you're actually going to sustain. Now, a lot of singers get to the E of the diphthong because it's easier to hold. They'll say, my. They go, my. The song, my way. You know, you hear people go, my way. They want to get to the E because it closes down. The, it's a narrower vowel. It's a little easier to hold it. My way, you know. But what you want to do is you want to take the E, my, ma, and sustain an uh. Ma. So you go, ma. And finish the diphthong at the very end. So it's not... My, it's my. Okay, that's how you do an I. It's an uh, I, and then you finish the diphthong at the end. Way or a is the same thing. It's not a. You take an a and an e and you marry them together, as if you had an Irish brogue, and you you were going to say the word faith in, in with your Irish brogue. I don't have a good Irish brogue, but the idea would be you wouldn't say. Faith, you'd say faith. Faith. I'm marrying the two together. I'm not going A. I'm going A. And then at the very, very end. So I married the two together. So play around with these things. Use those tools. Take the idea, the principle of the next narrowest sound. If that doesn't work over the next narrowest sound. Okay? If it's a, go to a. If that doesn't work, go to e. Right? Sing an a in an e position. Instead of a, sing e. Put the a there. E. Same idea. If you're splatting on an o, o, put it in an u position. Put your lips up for u. Say o, o. There's uh, so many more things that I could go into, but I do suggest that you get that video because it'll really walk you through in great detail this stuff if you're interested in the vowels. And it's all about vowels.
That's how you're going to hold notes and phrases forever and a day. Okay. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I had a blast doing this. This was really, really fun. Um, so yeah, go get that free uh, singing accelerator video series. You know, the link will be in the description. And that just that one video is, is, well, it's free. So I'm going to say is, is worth it. But I mean, how could it not be worth it? It's free. Um, so go grab that. If you'd like my free ebook, The Five Biggest Mistakes Singers Make While Singing in the Mixer Belting and How You Can Avoid Them, the link will be in the description. You can grab that as well. It's awesome. And it's free. So why not? I have a new service. Let me clear my throat. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a new service that I'm offering through a, a, a website called Wissio. I have my own Wissio page. And it's where I can give you personalized feedback. So right on the page, you can create a video of you singing, an audio of you singing, send it right to me. And for a very small fee, especially compared to my normal fee, for a very small fee, you can get a, a personalized video from me, giving you not only feedback, but letting you know how to take care of the challenges or fix the problems that you're having. So I don't just sit back and analyze and say, well, you need to do this, this, and this. You know, you got this going on, and then boom, 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 see you later. I say, well, yeah, this is what you need to do. Here's what's going on. Here's what you need to do. Here is how to do it. Here are some tools so that I, I can help you get to the next level. So anyway, if you're interested in that, that's really, really awesome and great fun for me and uh, very valuable for you as well. So link is in the description. Um, I was going to say something, you know, oh, yeah, oh, please subscribe. That's what I was going to say, right? Um, so I'm getting a lot of subscribers. It's awesome. I'm not, not a lot compared to like a lot of these folks, but uh, it's great for me and I'm loving it. Um, hit the bell for notifications. Comment. I love your comments. Let me know if you like this. If you want more of this, let me know what you like, what you don't like. Um, and, um, this one, oh yeah, thumbs up if you like the video. And I, and I hope so. And I hope you do. Um, and you know, some floating around, there'll be recommended videos for your, uh, enjoyment. And go watch those, and I will look forward to seeing you uh, next time, which will be very, very soon, because I do these on Wednesday and Friday. So thanks so much for joining me, and bye-bye.